press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Hi Bulbul, welcome. Everybody knows you as a prolific author for children's books and for adults, as an artist as well. So uh, today we're talking about your book with Good Earth Publications, Secret Tales from the Himalayas. So could you tell us a little about that? Hi, lovely to be talking to you. And this is my new book and uh, it's called Secret Tales from the Himalayas and it's published by Good Earth. Now, basically what I'm doing in this book is I'm sharing um, uh, the experience of being in a Himalayan forest with children. So I'm trying to take them through a forest, teaching them a little bit, not too much teaching, but more a sharing of visuals, what we see, what we hear. And I've tried to do it through a kind of magical storytelling format. Yes, uh, I went through the book and uh, I think there are several stories told in one book because every animal is, tr you know, trying to get the woodcutter to not cut that old Deoda tree. So each one has a story to tell. So, I mean, the book is full of little stories. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what you to do. There's so many books teaching children about not to cut trees and grow more trees and do that. So I just wanted to, this, the message is the same that, you know, we must love our trees, we must cherish our uh, heritage, that you must uh, look after the forest. But I thought I'd do it through a storytelling format to catch the, you know, attention of both children and adults actually. Yeah, and I like the way you say when the woodcutter thinks to himself that when he goes back, when he looks at a pebble, he'll know where it came from, you know, it's travelled so far. So Yeah, that, that's what I tried and rather that, you know, to put in every little aspect of a forest experience, not just the tree, but the animals that take shelter, that, you know, why is the river flowing and where is it going, to just make the children a little curious. Children are very curious, you know, naturally they have this curiosity. So if you can help them a little bit, not too much, I find if you load them with too much information, facts and bombard them with a whole lot of, you know, facts about uh, nature, facts about geography, history, science, then they kind of switch off. But I, I feel if you can do it through storytelling, it, it works better. Yeah, because at the end of the book also, there's a lot of information about the about the trees, about the forest, the animals that live there. So, yeah. yeah so that, that's why, and that's why, you know, the title, Secret Tales from the Himalayas. So that was also to catch their attention, instead yeah. of saying just the Himalayas or the forest in Himalaya. So, the, you know, all those little aspects, and I've done a lot of illustrations also, I don't know if you can see them. Um, about basically like you said it's stories within stories yeah. so as you know because of the other has lots of friends in the forest and they don't want the tree to be cut so they keep telling them stories so through those stories i've tried to explain a different aspect of the forest yeah and uh, when it comes to the illustrations i mean you do them yourself right and uh, is it a certain style that you choose because i can see like it's like watercolor or crayons you know it's very child friendly yeah uh, you know i don't do many illustrations only a few illustrations uh, i've done only three illustrated books so far this is my third one and here i've used uh, mainly pastel pastel and watercolor mix uh, like a mixed media and because very often like my earlier book was a book of birds which I did for children and I saw a lot of children would copy the drawings so it's, it's I think it's important to keep it simple so that the child feels that okay this is something I can do too yeah and uh, so when you know when we were growing up we had all these books like Champak etc and a lot of animal stories the Jataka tales so I'm just wondering you must be meeting a lot of children through your workshops and so, um, do children still relate to these simple things, simple stories like these? They do, you'll be surprised, you know, that I do, uh, over the years I've been working with children now for almost 15 years, I've lots of workshops, lots of storytelling sessions, painting sessions, and they tell me so many different stories that they know much more 
you know and then this whole thing about children not reading of course they do children who can afford to have a lot of other gadgets you know ipads and phones and television and but they still love reading my own grandchildren they read like mad and and they really they absorb a lot you know when they're reading they they know what they're reading they just don't read and i think some in is they're better than adults because they absorb everything that's told to them and that is why uh, being a children's author is slightly more difficult than writing for adults because you have to be very careful what you you know what you're writing okay so you're saying you have to be more careful when you're writing for children Definitely. Now, you're shaping minds. You know, you're telling them something which might stay with them for a long time. They might remember it when they're much older. So, children, yeah. Absorb. But it they must like be a, them. yeah. It must be a different kind of joy as well. You know, writing for children, right? Yes, it is. Certainly, it is because when a child uh, praises your book. he's so honest he or she is absolutely honest you know he's not going to praise your book because you could like he's being polite or something not at all if they like your book they will come up to you in some you know so often a child in the, like if i'm in a bar or somewhere some child will come up and say oh we read your book and uh, you wrote this and you wrote that but then you shouldn't have done this <laughs> so they very frank and they they praise is very very innocent you know yeah you know you also wrote, uh, wrote uh, something about gods and demons and also book on ramayan for children so do uh, i think you must have written that a while ago but is that uh, does that still hold appeal for children today yes i know does. that you know mm-hmm, stories in mythology are so rich so yeah and especially indian mythology is just amazing it's just an ocean of stories and and children love it thanks to amar chitra katha you know yeah. children really know those stories and i wrote ramayan quite some time ago almost about 10 years ago it's still in print and a lot of schools actually children study it in school in school so it's uh, and and whenever i do a workshop with them i go to several schools too because they're studying it in their syllabus and they really know the book by heart you know i might have forgotten something some little thing they say no but ma'am you didn't you wrote this and it's like that so uh, yes mythology is uh, appeals to children a lot indian mythology and there's so many good books now there's several authors who are doing both not just for children even for adults you know mythology is it's, yeah it's really really popular that's true it has this uh, unending appeal really yeah uh, so tell me i'm curious to know where do your stories come from i mean growing up i i mean i was looking at your book also no saint dance so <laughs> so i mean did you grow up hearing a lot of stories in your family how was it i did i think um, you know most children i'm sure you must have also grown up listening to so many yes, t- of course sorry yeah. Indian yeah. families. We are blessed to be born in India. I think because Indian family, especially the women, are great storytellers, and there will always be uh, shared family history, which you know, Saint Aunt uh, answers about that. It's really stories yeah. I heard when I was growing up from my various uh, women relatives mainly, and my mother was a great storyteller. She had an amazing imagination. Now, half the time. you were wondering whether it really happened or whether she made it all up so uh, yes i think my i get it from my mother you know, storytelling it's kind of so, just joy of listening you know if you listen to just stories when you're traveling or you're just listening uh, talking to some friends and they'll come and tell you a story this there's, there's so many things happening all the time in india at different levels so it's it's easy to big stories out easy very easy in india i think is easier than living in iceland or norway where you know you hardly have it you have tradition but it's not that uh, that much a part of their family tradition but your books have been translated as well in several languages right yeah yeah, yeah. they have <laughs> <laughs> i was a bit surprised when uh, saint edan got translated because it's such a it's just book about indian women and about india 
sent it would appeal to you know people it's been translated into several languages but uh, i in fact i went for a, a festival to france and a lot of women uh, told me that they could relate to the stories because they especially the older women you know they could yeah. relate to having these kind of family stories and in italy also they felt that what not just me many other indian writers they could relate to because the stories were similar yeah so uh, tell me you've been an artist and author throughout your career so what came first uh, well uh, painting came first as to paint a lot even as a child as to uh, paint all the time i was not very good in my studies but i was to you know be very good in drawing and uh, i thought i'd go to college of art but i didn't and i went to jnu instead i did languages and that's how some you know the love for literature came some started then i did russian literature and um, and even after that i wasn't writing professionally i started writing professionally much later i would uh, i started writing for statesmen i was doing some you know just uh, features for them about people who made a living Uh, working on the streets of delhi you know seasonal work and from there it just started i i just enjoyed writing and then i the publisher got in touch with me asked me to do a book and then i was telling him about my aunts you know the journey i had gone to calcutta for a wedding and he said okay now you do a book about the aunts so it, it was purely by accident but then i i don't paint at much now i still paint but writing has sort of uh, taken over my life do you have a count of how many books you've done for adults and children yes, i do in fact you know i uh, i've written 18 books okay children for children and for adults oh and uh, does living in the hills inspire you to write more yeah definitely because it's so quiet in the hills and there's you know you just feel that your your mind is not cluttered in delhi so many things are happening and you want to do so many things yeah. but in the hills you can go for a walk you can come back and sit at your desk and write for at least 5 or 6 hours every day you don't feel tired you just you just feel you have that much more energy to write yeah you also recently you also wrote birds in my garden So, were these birds found in your garden in Delhi or in the hills? Yeah, they were in no, they were in Delhi. They uh, fairly common birds that you can see. This book, by the way, Anuradha was written long time ago. It was the first book I wrote. It was written oh. almost twenty years ago, and yeah. so it's been issued. I've did some chapters, and then uh, Speaking Tiger has published it. Yeah. Well, I'm very happy to see it again because it was it was uh, one of the first books for children in India for uh, birds. So it was, and I did the illustrations also. And I'm happy to see that people, you know, are using it. And now young uh, parents who read it when they were children have bought it for their children. So that that's yeah, cool. new generation is it? New generation, yeah. And most of these birds you can see. you know in uh, in and around delhi okay yeah. and uh, and you don't have to have a garden you can just see it in the park you can just or from your balcony just, yeah yeah balcony from you know when it's raining now the monsoons will come you'll see many more birds yeah uh, so uh, i was reading an interview of yours and i found it very interesting that you said that for women they're not used to solitude and uh, <laughs> always used to things happening around the house so you've also been writing through your entire time you know bringing up children now grandchildren so you know how is it different for women who are writing yeah you know i just feel a lot of people say that oh, they would like to write but they don't have the place or they don't have the uh, you know i need a quiet place to write but i think when most women writers especially in india have just made space in some maybe they were like uh, for instance i was reading uh, mahashweta devi's um, autobiography and she used to write at night you know when the household everybody was asleep because there was no time there was no place so she said when everybody fell asleep at night at 12 o'clock she used to go into one corner 
light a lamp and she used to write then so if you want to write i think you will you know you'll just write anywhere yeah you find a way used to multitasking and i feel that uh, all my women writer friends they just write whenever they can write they don't wait for a desk or a room or some kind of privacy they they they're capable of writing anywhere and i i used to write like that as write at my dining table right writing at my dining table and uh, with things happening all around and it doesn't bother you because you're in your own world in any case when you're writing that's true but do you have any favorite uh, nook where you write is there any place well me years in the hills you know i've created yeah. a little bit of myself i write. i'm in delhi i just write anywhere you know i write mm. at a desk and as long as they're not too many things happening especially you know when you're in the beginning when you start a novel you you're a little like your tentative you know, haven't done the whole plot line properly so that's the time you need solitude you need to be quiet and you need your that not to be disturbed when you're doing it that is done then it uh, i at least that's personally for me now you know i can write even if this somebody building a wall <laughs> behind me <laughs> yeah that's nice but sometimes you know you because writing is gets quite uh, lonely and after writing for 2 3 hours i just sort of look around hoping somebody will knock on the door and somebody will you know come in and say disturb me for a little while so i can take a break yeah you also uh, teaching art to special children yeah. well um, i would say I teach but i would uh, do i did a lot of workshop uh, now of course with this last 5 6 months i haven't done any but what i do is i uh, i organize workshops where the special needs children come and do storytelling and art with me together i don't really teach them we just work together because i'm i'm not qualified as a teacher so uh, so i i just like to share what i know with them okay and, and they, then they do more than half way they you just have to give them you know the paints and the paper and they do their own thing in fact they don't like you telling them anything they get a little irritated if you try and <laughs> control them too much. yeah but uh, how did, uh, any message for special needs parents you know parents of special needs children any message for parents of uh, special needs children and you know how art can help them you know art can really help them it's such a powerful learning tool i think art is i uh, really is the most important way to get not just a special needs child but any child to make them feel better to make them feel more confident to make them feel you know like they're worth something great because not every child is good at studying if art is something they can all do and most of them do it very well if they're not you know controlled too much so with for special needs i would just tell them that give them a lot of material you know give them a lot of paper give them crayons and they're not expensive crayons and give them like uh, ordinary photocopying paper and let them create a mess don't say ki ye kharab ho jayega don't do this don't do that because then a child starts feeling oh this is something i have to be good at this is something i shouldn't spoil and then they start backing off I've noticed that if you give a child a big sheet of expensive white paper and some fancy crayons and say it's ठीक से करना, don't spoil it, he's not going to enjoy that. But if you just give them rough sheets and just give them ordinary crayons which are not very expensive, let him break it, let him do whatever he wants, but let him just enjoy the process. And that that I feel that really helps. to build their confidence and to and they feel very as if they doing something with the family if the mother the father the siblings all sit together and do it they really enjoy it yeah uh, growing up what children's books did you read or any that you can recommend even from the current uh, crop of writers i'm just other and further back and reading a lot of panchatantra story in fact i just recorded a panchatantra story for air they're doing a wonderful series where they're asking authors to read panchatantra stories okay. so that got me 
back again into the original Panchatantra stories, you know, which were really written for adults. And they are fascinating. I would recommend people to go back to Sharma, you know, the thick Panchatantra, yeah. not the children one. Go back to the original Panchatantra story and read them and they're so witty. But they, they anticipate everything, you know, whatever's happening in our modern life, they seem to have known it you know, hundreds of years ago. And um, besides that, of course, I read a lot of Roald Dahl. I read a lot of, um, I know people don't like Enid Blyton nowadays, it's not fashionable to write. <laughs> like no, but the stories are still enjoyable, yeah. And they're so simple, you know, uncomplicated. Yeah. yeah. I like Harry Potter a lot. And, uh, I love uh, reading um, Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorite books. But uh, at the moment, I'm Panchatantra is my okay. favorite. <laughs> okay. And, and then uh, uh, in, uh, children's writers now who do doing great work. So you just go on the list on and see, especially Bukaru organizes these excellent festivals so if you see the list of Bukharu writers they're all very good you know Paro Anand and there's so many of them Dipali they, you know, all their books are just brilliant yeah so uh, finally any message for parents who are worried that their children are not reading enough well you know worrying is not going to help that if you worry and um, if they will just read once they want to read they will read and the thing is it's like a, a mysterious thing you know some children won't read at all and suddenly they find one book that unlocks something in their mind and then they discover the whole joy of reading so you just have to give them a lot of books and not give them you know like pressurize them too much why have you to reading why have you read that book i bought you let them just pick it up themselves whatever it is it might be just a simple you know book not not sort of uh, not a book that the parent thinks that <laughs> as long as he enjoys it he or she enjoys it then he'll start reading other books but i think let them be at them make their own choice of books may i add one more thing you know children yes, love writing children love writing their own stories so one way of getting to read is the uh, or a father can or both together can sit down and maybe write a story together you know that gets the children very curious ki what will happen next the whole magical storytelling is what will happen isn't it that that's what all storytelling is about so if a child writes such small story he gets to he gets interested in the whole storytelling process and then he, he'll pick up a book and read 